So uh, I'm talking a little bit about the reasons for a post. The purpose of a post is for the retention of the core buildup. The post prevents the core from separating from the tooth. Remember in this clinical situation there are not enough walls remaining on the natural tooth to retain the core on its own. It needs the extra help to keep the core from dislodging from the tooth, thus the need for a post. The ferrule provides resistance to tooth fracture. The two millimeters of natural tooth height needed or ferrule prevents excessive loading of the tooth from the post. So when a crown is loaded laterally, the ferrule will take some of the lateral load to minimize the force that the post exerts on the tooth. Remember, the post acts like a lever arm and can place extra pressure at the root. This often leads to root fracture or a loose post. The post does not strengthen the tooth. Its function is to retain the post and core material not strengthen the tooth. So here's a picture of the tooth broken down and here's a picture of we just did a root canal in the distal root. Uh, we took a measurement on that and it's 19 millimeters from the from the marginal ridge to the end of the root so we want to have at least five millimeters of gutta percha left so that means we could put technically a 14 millimeter post in that, but we're probably only going to go about 10 millimeters down the canal. And again, we will size it up just like we did the anterior tooth. So here we are, we're getting ready to uh, clean out the gutta percha from that, that original x-ray. So again, remember, we have different sizes of posts. This is a three, a three and a half, a four, and a four and a half post. Three, four, it's actually three, four, four and a half, and five posts. Three, four, four and a half, and five. There isn't a three and a half post. So these are the sizes. We always start with the smallest post. We know that the size of the root canal, because it was done here at school, the length of the canal is 19 millimeters from the marginal ridge. So we're going to use that as our, as our reference. And since we have to leave at least five millimeters of gutta percha, five from 19 is 14, 14 millimeters, but the, the length of the post is 15 millimeters, so we'll probably cut a millimeter or two off, but meantime, we don't know if there's any particular curve that isn't gonna let the post go deeper, and so we're gonna determine that now by, by actually making the post base. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to take the touch and heat again and and I'm going to take the touch and heat and and, and you can see there is the gutta percha in the distal canal and I'm going to take put the touch and heat on cold like this and I'm going to turn it on I'm going to go in a few millimeters take my finger off take some gutta percha off just to create an initial space we don't have to remove all the gutta percha down to our length because that's that touch and heat tip is smaller than some of the post drills and it may take more gutta percha than we need. So then I'm going to take this first post, the smallest one, the three, and I'm going to set that at at least 14 millimeters. There it is. So that's where I'm going to start as my reference. Put that in the slow speed handpiece, latch, make sure that the speed's on about 20. So then I'm going into the, the distal root and we're going to let this take its own path. And it's going very easy to, to 14 millimeters. So I probably could go deeper, but I don't need to go any deeper because I don't have any much longer of a uh, post in this post system. There are other post systems that are longer. So now I'll take the next size up post and I'm going to set it at four, I'm going to set it at 14 right there back into that tooth. 
back into the distal. And it goes pretty easy. So I'm going to probably try to go up one more post size just to see because I'm not, I'm not um, meeting much resistance. And that's basically how I judge how big of a post it is, is the resistance on the gutta percha and the drill going down into the canal. So there I am at 14. Hold on a minute. 14 right there. I could do it this way also. Just put this in at 14. 14 hole. And now I'm going to go down into that distal root again with the 14. With this. And it goes down and it actually has resistance there. So I'm probably in a little bit of a curve of the tooth. So now that was a, a number five, four, five, four and a half post. So then I'm going to take a four and a half post out of the hot box and I'm going to fit that down into the canal and it goes as deep as it can go. And, and it's a little bit, a little high. I think I'm going to take it and take a little bit of post off the end of that to make it go just a little, to get, to get the rings right here, right down at the orifice of the canal. So I'm going to take, take the high speed and I'm going to cut about a millimeter off of the end of that post. And then I'm going to round the end of that a little bit so it's not too sharp. And now I'm going to put it back in to see how it goes. And it goes deeper and a little bit nicer into the canal. And then down to the orifice. And then we'll be using that. If you if you, you remember if you're if it's sticking up too high into the to the chamber of the tooth, when you prep the tooth, you're going to run into the post, and you don't want to really expose a post at the surface of a core because if you don't have a rubber dam on, that's a place for bacteria to go down between the junction of the post and the core material. So you always want to have it, and it doesn't have to be right up to the top of the, the occlusal surface because you're going to cut that down to put a build up in the tooth anyway and prep it for a crown. So it fits pretty good. I can bring it out that way. And now what we're going to do is, because we've had a rubber dam on, what we're going to do is we're going to dry the canal. Make sure that there's no moisture in there to re mess up the set in the bonding. Make sure it's nice and dry. Okay. And then just like we did before, we're going to take a picture of that tooth with the post in to see how it sets up before we cement anything. So let me go ahead and do that right now. So I'm going to put that post in and we're going to take a quick picture of it to see where it is. So here's a picture of the post fitting in the tooth. Uh, remember this is a four and a half post and it went fairly easy without much work. Uh, I, I'm not real thrilled with the, the thinness of this wall here so maybe we could have stopped with one smaller post. Um, but, but here's the example. That post drill went down to where it stopped going easily. And if I would have taken and pushed that distance to make it go the whole length, I would have torn out the side of the distal side of that root right there and possibly destroyed the tooth. So that again, when I talked about the you're drilling out gutta percha, if the drill doesn't go easily, then you're not in gutta percha and don't go any farther because there's an anatomical reason that that post drill is not going deeper. So you want to remind that here, this little, this last nub, it could be a little deeper, but it'll be fine right there if I need it because it's giving me a little more height to the post. So now I'm going to get ready to clean this out. 
Um, let me go back to the original tooth now. So as I said before on the other tooth, on this tooth, we're gonna, um, you always have a rubber dam on so there is no contamination, but if there is some debris in the canal space and you wanna clean that debris out, you're basically gonna use a paper point and some IvoClean, which will clean the surface of the canal and make it better for bonding of the cement to the root surface. So what you'll do is you put this on a paper point and you go in and out of the canal with it. I'm not gonna do that now, but that's basically what you'll do with the paper point. And then you'll rinse it out with water, then you'll dry it with another paper point, and then you're ready to cement the post. You always remember you have to have a rubber dam on these teeth so there is no contamination of the root canal. There is no dropping of the post down the patient's throat or aspiration into the patient's lung. Very important that you always follow that tenet. You have to have a rubber dam on. You can't risk on that, that happening. So now what I'm gonna do is I have the post ready. Here again are the plastic. This is how we're gonna deliver the post. This is the cement that we're using, it's speed sem. And what we will do, and we're using uh, the standard composite gun to deliver the post. We want the cement to come up to the orifice of the canal, not to fill the chamber, because we wanna leave the chamber clear for as much composite as we can. So what we'll do is after we cement the post, after we fill the canal and put the post in, we may take a micro brush and clean the excess out of the pulp chamber. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. The first thing you wanna always do when you're using a, a mixing syringe with a mixing tip is you always wanna bleed off the first little bit so that you, have, you know you have a good mix. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm, you don't have to fill up the canal, just go about a third of the way up. Then you put the, the green stopper in, you load that into the, and you can bend the needle so it'll go down the canal. Then here we are, and I'm gonna go into the distal root. I gotta look in there as I do that, and I'm gonna squeeze and put that, fill that right up to the orifice of the canal. And then I'm gonna put the post in to length. And then I'm gonna take the micro brush and I'm gonna use that to clean out any excess around the post. Then I'll take a light and I'll light cure the surface of that so I can move on while the cement down in the root portion can take its own sweet time to heal, to cure. You don't need a long time and a lot, a couple beeps should be adequate. There you go, 20 seconds. And now that post is solid in that canal and then we'll be able to go ahead and do our buildup. And then we uh, take a post picture of everything before we dismiss the patient.